Hey, how you doing? This is RJ. Today I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about the Women of Marvel panel that was at the San Diego Comic-Con and which was translated into the Women of Marvel podcast, which is a monthly podcast that is produced, I do believe, by Sana Amanat. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the second part of this and go into a little bit of um, more positive outcome in this video than the last one. I'm going to go into the negative before we can get into the positive, but I'm going to have hopefully a more positive outcome with this. And what I talked about in the last one was about the fact that these women in comics, we need to get rid of them. We need to get rid of them because they're not there on merit and they have no intention of competing that their comics, these these venues themselves, the Women of Marvel panel and this Women of Marvel podcast, they're women only and they're safe spaces for women. And this is getting translated into the comics where you have comics like Miss Marvel and Captain Marvel which I would argue are safe spaces for women as well, that they're either never going to get canceled, or if they do get canceled, they're always going to be brought back with the same people and just given a new number one because they're safe spaces for these women creators, safe in so much as they're told pretty much that these things are never going to be canceled. They're always going to come back if they are canceled. And I talked a little bit about uh, Captain Marvel in the last one and how that works with Captain Marvel, but I didn't talk so much about the Miss Marvel one. And the Miss Marvel one, um, my argument for that is from this panel itself, because you have the two creators on this panel of Miss Marvel, and you have the writer, and then you have Sana Amanat, who also helped create this character. And they are both just overjoyed with the fact that Miss Marvel, they say in this panel, is about to hit issue number 50. And the writer herself specifically says she can't believe that it was actually that it's actually going to hit issue 50. She never even believed when it began that it would reach issue 10. Those are her words. So she thought that this thing was going to be canceled pretty much right out of the gate. So you have the creator of this very thing not having confidence in the product that she is actually producing. And if you look at the other end of that and you compare what the sales or distribution numbers are, you will see that the audience doesn't have any confidence in this character or this book either. So if you don't have an audience that has any backing for this and don't have any confidence for this book, and you have creators who don't have any confidence in this book, then there is a third thing holding this book up. And that third thing, I would argue, is the fact that this creator is being told that this is a safe space, one way or another, either openly or covertly, in just the actions of the people around her, basically saying that this is a safe space for you. It doesn't matter how bad you do. It doesn't matter how bad this book does. It's still going to be produced. Don't you worry. So it's a safe space for this creator. And a safe space just negates any idea of competition and any idea of merit. And that, in a nutshell, is what why we need to get rid of these women in comics. And I think that there needs to be an across-the-board purge of women from comics. They just need to be gotten rid of. There can be, I'm sure someone should point out to me where these good women in comics are, because there can be some good women in comics. And if we want to keep them, that's, that's fine, that's good. If they are competitors and they're there on merit, keep them. But for the most part, all of them, the rest of them, especially in Marvel, have been contaminated with this socialist kind of mindset where competition is a bad thing and that's part of the patriarchy and you get rid of that. We don't have to be here on merit. There is no such thing as competition. If our book does poorly, that's the fault of the patriarchy, not the fault that we actually have a bad product. So we need to get rid of them. And how do you get rid of them? Well, <clears throat> it's kind of a roundabout way of me talking about this, but the thing is that comics are for men. Now, it doesn't matter how much Sana Amanat wants to say that comics are no longer a boy brand, comics are no longer for boys, and she says in this panel, you know, girls like comics too, you know, and all of this kind of things. You know, there is a reason why comics are predominantly purchased by men. There's a couple of reasons, and I'll go over two really simple ones here. Two really simple ones here are, I would say, that superhero comic book characters, comic book heroes, are something that primarily would attract men. These kinds of heroes are primarily a male attractor. Why? Because they encapsulate encapsulate in them the idea not only of competition but of conflict and that conflict indeed is a good thing 
that you can have conflict and it to be a good thing. And that's not a female trait. That's a male trait. You can go right to the idea that that's what testosterone actually produces in men. They make them hype. It makes them hyper competitors. It makes them want to compete with others and to struggle with others. It, it does. It's just that's part of science, right? And so for men, they think that's a good thing. And so these heroes will appear appeal primarily to men. And the other thing being that, again, scientifically, it's been shown that men are much more attracted to the visual, by the visual, than women are. And comics are primarily a visual medium. That's the thing that hits you first. Before you read the story, the visual hits you. And so, you know, you have these two things that can be scientifically documented and would just back up the idea that, yes, comics are primarily for men. Comics are primarily for the male because they are dealing with mediums and with characters and with situations that are going to attract men than more than women. And the other part of what I want to talk about is the fact that I've gone over this before, that, you know, women and men are equal. Sure. Everybody understands that in this day and age, but that doesn't make them the same. Equal does not mean same. And as I had said in one of my previous videos, trying to break it down into almost like a mathematical problem, you know, 2 plus 3 and 4 plus 1 both equal 5. But they're not the same equation. They're different equations, and they have different properties. Men are 2 plus 3. Women are 4 plus 1. They're both equal but they're different. And as being different, they have different skill sets. Men have different skill sets than women. Women are particularly good at certain things that men are not good at, and men are particularly good at things that women are not good at. And this is just readily apparent to anybody who opens their eyes and knows anything about human nature. But the reason why I'm going over it is because we need to get rid of these women in Marvel and in comics because they're not competitors, because they're not there on merit. And the way that you do that is through hyper-competition. You need to reinvigorate that hyper-competition. And I'm sure they're probably going to call it, what would they call it, toxic masculinity. They want to call it toxic masculinity. Go ahead. Let's, let's have some more toxic masculinity then. I'm all for that, if that's what it means. If competition and conflict is what hyper-masculinity is, then let's have more hyper-masculinity. Let's have more of that. Because we need to put this back into our product of comics, and there's a very simple way, a very simple device that we have to do that. It's called capitalism. It's the hyper-competitor. It's there for conflict in some of its aspects, you know? Let's just reintroduce that instead of these idiotic socialist notions that we have running some of these companies. Now, the way that we do that, I think there are two very good ways that we can do that, at least that come to my mind. The first one would be that we need to support some of these women out there or foster some women who want to get into comics who are actually hyper competitors, who are actually there on merit. Because I would argue that if you have a woman that can write in a genre like comic books and write on an equal playing field, a true equal playing field with men and do the same sales numbers and make a same product that is just as good, they are actually better writers than the men. And why would they be better writers than the men? Because the women will have to first learn the skill set of what a man understands in the back of his head, how to appeal to a man, how to appeal to male, uh, male genre, with, like comic books. They need to actually learn this skill set because for most men, if they're good writers, they might have some of it in their foreground of their brain, but most of it's in the part that's buried deep within and, you know, almost a um, intrinsic or a uh, instinctual kind of way that they use it. But the women, they will in order to actually get to that same merit place as the men, well, first of all, they're going to have to put in double the effort because they're going to have to learn a new skill set. And no, that's not the patriarchy. And no, that's not unfair. That's life. And so, yeah, they're going to have to work twice as hard to get to the same place as the men because they're going to have to learn a separate skill set. But I would argue that once they actually learn that separate skill set, their rewards when they get to that place of merit is doubly 
that what of what the men would get. Why? Because they can write better than the men. Because everything is in the foreground of their brain. This whole new skill set that they had to learn, it's all in the foreground. And so they can use it and manipulate it and make better stories with it. And if you take these women who are hyper competitors and who are willing to go through that competition and that double extra effort to get there and still be hyper competitors and set them next to these socialist minded women who need safe spaces in order for their comics to sell, then these women who need the safe spaces are going to just make excuses and just fade away. They're going to be basically shamed into by the sales numbers and by how this other person is doing so much better than them. They're going to be shamed into uh, dropping comics. They're going to make some excuse up like, well, it was time for me to leave because I felt that I had done enough and that I needed to move on to greener pastures of some such kind. But in the back of their heads, they're cowering in the corner because, of course, they don't, they not only um, are not used to any kind of competition uh, in their normal lives, but they've been given safe spaces in order to keep that competition away from them. And when that competition actually gets shoved in their faces and they show they are shown how inadequate they are in order to be people to produce these kinds of things, they're just going to slink away into the darkness. And so we need to foster really good women in comics. That's why we need to use things like Move the Needle uh, that Richard Meyer has um, created in order to support really good competitive um, female creators and make sure that they are supported in our industry. And the other thing that I think that we could do, and I went over uh, in a fairly in-depth manner in one of my other videos, which I think was um, why Marvel hates editors, is the fact that the best thing would be to do is to turn one of these smaller companies to make them a hyper competitor again, because these smaller companies can go out of business. We need to grind them to the point where they're about to go out of business. And so flip them around so that they become hyper competitors again, because if they start out selling Marvel, who has this giant pot of Disney money in order to draw from, then again, women and not just women, but these effeminate men who need these safe spaces and say, we don't need to compete, start being shown up by numbers that they're being outsold by people who have vastly inferior resources from them, then they're going to be ashamed and they're going to be shamed into leaving the comic industry on their own terms because trying to push them out seems to, at some level, just get them entrenched more in there. They, We need to drive them out by them their own internal shaming mechanisms kicking into place and you, we do that by looking, because they're giving us, they're, they're showing their hand right now, telling us the things that are going to hurt them because they need safe spaces. Well, if they need safe spaces, let's rip them out of these safe spaces and if they need safe spaces in order to keep them away from competition and merit let's shove competition and merit in their face and you know everybody might want to say well that's a mean thing to do it's not a mean thing to do all you got to do and because i'm not saying to do it in a mean-spirited way i'm not saying to do it in a way that is going to put people down i'm saying be capitalist all you got to do really and you know, I grew up in a day and age where that was not a toxic idea to ask people in a marketplace to be capitalists, not unless you were in the USSR. So this is my idea. Tell me what you think about my idea about how we can try to get these toxic women out of comics so that we can make comics better and partly by bringing in women who are actually merit-based writers and creators and people who will produce good products. Like I said, leave me a comment. Give me something new to think about. If I have given you anything new to think about, hit like, hit subscribe. And um, you can also share the links for this. You can go on my Twitter page. I always post everything in my Twitter page for these videos. You can just retweet those and that would be sharing them. That would be great. And I will have a new topic. I think I've, I've exhausted this topic. I'm just going to do two. I thought I might do more than two, but two is good enough for this topic. So I'll have a new topic uh, the next time I put out a video. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.